Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today we're going to be painting Mountain Meadow, this cute little landscape. We're going to have a lot of fun doing this. I'm going to explain every part of the steps of how that's created, every, every little part. I'm going to be doing it on a 16 by 20. Tracking me today on the Sherpa cam is my sweet husband, John. Hi, John. Hi. <laughs> I love having good? him in the show like this. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I really do. Previously, before we did live and we did it like this, I had to stand in the room and pretend <laughs> to be with people, which was an interesting experience and also caused my children to question my relative sense of sanity. So now they feel a little bit better about where I'm coming from because they know I'm talking to somebody. Yeah. But of course, I was always talking to you. We knew that. We knew that. So today... Definitely doing Mountain Meadow. Mountain Meadow, guys, is probably going to feel like a three hoot. Yeah? Yeah. Landscapes are generally going to feel a little bit three hoot ish. Well, yeah, why is that? I think it's because we've looked at a lot of landscape. This is my honest, real theory about why some things are more challenging for people. Um, when we have a lot of visual information in our brains that's stored about a subject like, say, tree or face or landscape, there's a real moment where what we internally know we can do and what we're physically ready to do sometimes comes into conflict. Yeah. And there's anxiety and all kinds of stuff. But listen, the goal of this is just to finish the landscape. We're going to be talking about how you convert paintings and I mean pictures into paintings and how you break down landscape paintings because I see from you guys all the time you'll be like, I'm working on this landscape, I'm working on this landscape and I'm not really sure how to do it. I'm going to be talking about how you might be thinking about some of those elements. So when you're working on that at home, you're having a little more fun when you're doing it. Because the whole point of painting was to like relax and have more fun, right? right? Exactly. Right? Right? Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for the support on our big news. Oh, yes. There's lots. Oh, my gosh. There are so many wonderful comments out there. Yes. I was having so much fun this morning going out there and saying hello to everyone. I mean, just like. Yes. It's awesome. And I would like to point out, because many of you said, but what? What could you learn? Well, did you notice it took us a little while to get on today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think some stuff. I think we could use some help with some stuff. I saw some kids in this contest. They were like, I was like, I don't know how I'm in this thing. I don't know how to do any of those tricks. But if you look in the iCard, if you're like, big news, what's going on? Are you moving? What's happening? In the iCard, I uh, sure. put the announcement video. But basically, we're a uh, winner in the Next Step contest. And so I'm going to New York and getting training. To be better at lights and cameras and editing and everything that, you know, you guys probably don't notice until you notice. And then that stops being fun, doesn't it? When you're like, what's happening in that video? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> so we're ready to have some fun today. I have the, in the description below, I like to hide more information about whatever we're working on. And also on Facebook, I've been posting the picture. I think right now, just grab it off of Facebook, and then on the replay, you can grab it off of Pinterest. And also on the webpage. It's on the webpage. Yeah. So, theartsherva.com. Grab it and print it out, because sometimes it really helps to have the finished picture with you somewhere when you're painting it. Also, here's a materials list. Question that I heard, John. What, what's the question you heard? A lot of you guys are like, what's mixing white or zinc? And yep. what those are is those are transparent whites. If you don't have it, then you just have to do a drier, lighter brush or add a gel to it. You're trying to make it more see-through. And those whites are naturally more see-through. So you can, you can use any white. You just have to add a gel or paint it lighter or dry brush it or somehow get the effect with a light where the paint underneath is coming through. Right? Or, gotcha. you know, a tube of mixing white. Okay. Right. This is all good. Any of those things will be solutions. And for the color exchanges, um, you know, uh, if you only have phthalo, you only have phthalo. If you only have ultramarine, you only have ultramarine. If you only have ultramarine, your greens are going to be a little more olive. And if you only have phthalo, your greens are going to be a little bright. Yeah. So it's nice to have both. And that's what's happening there. Uh, any kind of bright red works for the CAD. Any kind of pinkish crimson works for the quinacridone. Um, a good warm yellow works for the cad yellow and then ochre and burnt sienna just kind of are that gold and brown. So those are kind of how you might think about those exchanges. Mm. Okay, people, cool. I get asked that a lot. Like, yeah. what can I change outside? I don't know. I got a tangential answer. Well, no, that's that. good because there are a lot of people, <laughs> I mean, like we get a lot of questions during, during the, during the, uh, ooh, sippy, sippy. 
we get a lot of questions asking, what can I trade for this, for that? And mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. I don't know. But the guy can ask you. <laughs> yeah, just any of it's fine. Get so greens, get stuff. You know. Are we going to put some lovely wishes? I do. I think we have three really important wishes to get on the canvas today. We do? We do. I put them in your text, but I know one right now. Do you, you put Our text? very own D is recovering, and we would really like to wish her healing and well-being in her heart area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know everybody just wants her to be better. And for, uh, let's see, I've got them pulled up here for you. Okay. We have some healing for Deborah. That her eyes and face are restored. Yeah, I think she could use some relief there. Eyes. Someone's going to notice I don't spell well. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, and we also have a wish uh, for all of those in Australia, the farmers in Australia. All the farmers in Australia. You may not know this, but they're going through a pretty rough drought in Australia. Mm Mm-hmm. And if we could just some, send some light and love to those farmers. Yeah. And some rain, which would also probably be appreciated. <laughs> some rain. Send some rainy, rainy, and, rainy and thoughts to Australia. If I can put a little wish in there for, yeah. uh, for Miss Mulcahy and her yeah. and her granddaughter, who's having a little, little depression. And uh, I remember reading that and just uh, wanted to send some wishes and love out to them. And all the little brushes that are out there having, you know, having some down days. You know. Yeah. That is something we could all use a little more, a little more joy. Just in case you're very first time here because you thought, oh, I'd like to paint that mountain landscape and you hadn't seen our deal before. We write wishes in. I use a watercolor pencil because it disappears into the paint and I tend to use colors that I know will disappear. If this were neon green, it might not disappear. But it's a color that will blend into my ultramarine nicely, so I don't have to worry about it. You can also write wishes or intentions on the back of your canvas. And if you see or hear a wish in the comments that really speaks to your heart, you can absolutely put it into your painting that is just as effective. Well-being in the world is just well-being in the world. And we could all use a little more well-being. If we could get one in for our own Jane. Yeah. Her son Jared. Little brush Jared. Get a wish for him in there. Lots of hearts around here. And, uh, and thank you guys. We got s- we get so many wishes coming in. We love them so much. And really, I, all of your light keepers out there, we mm-hmm. appreciate you catching those and putting them on the canvas for everyone. Uh, the light keepers have been on point this I week, John. No, I'm putting out. I'm gonna put out paint and then I'm gonna say what it is. Okay. The light keepers. Well, I can say this ago. This is ultramarine, like you do. I'm gonna put out some phthalo from the last of what's coming out of this tube. This tube's on its last legs because the cap was lost. Has that ever happened to any of you? <laughs> Lost a cap? Yeah, I save caps normally. I lose my cap every day. Uh, but for some reason, I can't find. I lost the baggie with all the save <laughs> caps, too. <laughs> Just can't catch a break. Um, Actually, how I've done this here, I really don't recommend people at home do. What's that? I put the ultramarine blue next to the phthalo blue next to the phthalo green. Yeah. And for most people, until you get really familiar with your products, these two will mix up easily and will cause you some havoc in your painting. So separate them, and if you need to, label what they are. Okay. Same with the Doxine Purple. Gotcha. Keep it separate from the other colors. Like, you may not be able to tell that from black visually at first when you're painting. Yeah. So definitely, definitely separate those out and label where you need to. This tube of paint, I want to, you know, we talk about the paint going off. This one is starting to go off. It's so annoying me. It's starting to get thick and defiant. I'm not going to worry about putting out my, um, I probably didn't even need to put out my purple, but I'm not going to worry about putting out my quinacridone yet. Because the chances are I won't be using it till the very end for the flowers. I don't really use it anywhere else in the painting but the flowers. And I'm going to miss my paint because I'm in the hottest studio in the world today. Are you? Yeah. Hottest studio. Anyways, I was telling you, light keepers on point. Yes. I have been, I John and I love to read the comments, as you guys know. You guys comment, like, share, you do stuff everywhere. You post pictures, you send us messages. You guys are on our website, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. And that's actually what we love to do um, with our free time is we'll relax and check out what you all had to say. And I have to say to my light keepers... Those people that make sure the world is a brighter, happier place to live in. 
the kindness and help and just reaching out to new painters that you guys have been doing has been extraordinary and I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. And he's been like, a couple times you guys made me tear up a little bit. I'm just like, wow, they're so nice. I'm going to be painting with some uh, Simply Simmons um, acrylic brushes. This is a number 10. Um, this one is, I think, the Goldilocks, the original Goldilocks. Yeah. Bright. The number 10 bright with an extra firm filament. Little mix up going on right now because, of course, brushes have no standardization. Um, on the Simply Simmons, don't worry about if they're labeled long handled or short handled. The short handled ones seem to be smaller. So go ahead and get on these, the long handled ones. I'm only in video speaking against, you know, handles that are so long I can't even show it on the screen. Right. This long. I don't know what to show it on the screen. So long you're poking yourself in the eye. This, this is not long handled to me so don't worry about it get the correct brush which is the long handled number 10 from filming gotcha 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 and i'm going to treat myself today to a treat john what's that i'm going to put out some golden retarder now that we've introduced it to the community oh yeah <laughs> and i feel like it's allowed it's allowed now <laughs> it's allowed it's just to make my job here easier as i'm painting in this sky and getting my gradation yeah if you guys don't know what this is this is golden acrylic retarder there's several products there was a quest about it, about all the ways to slow down the drying time of your paint and improve the flow. And I just have a really aggressive canvas here that's not playing well, so I know I'm going to need it. This is one of those economy canvases. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> they don't want to be painted. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> so I'm going to take um, a little of my ultramarine blue over to my phthalo white. I want a fairly light sky. Even its darkest. And I'm going to even grab a little of this retarder. Okay. And I'm going to make horizontal brush strokes across the top of my canvas. Right? And this is going to be my darkest color. <coughs> Uh-oh. What's that? Cough. A little cough. <coughs> Are you okay? Mm. You know what? It's that pine allergy season. <laughs> you know what's coming. Yeah. You know you had to sleep next to the snoring. You know. You don't snore. I don't? No. I feel like I snore. No, you don't snore. That's. I think that you're just doing that husband thing where you lie to your wife because you love her. And say, no, no. Nope. You've gained no weight. <laughs> Skinny is when I met you. <laughs> no, really, don't snore. <laughs> I, you don't snore. <laughs> you, I, you haven't. I was Look like, great I, in those jeans. <laughs> 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 it's all good. You're so funny. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, how can I get my husband in trouble on there? <laughs> I'm sure I can test the boundaries of this. <laughs> I can't stop either. <laughs> I know I should, but I can't. Look okay. over there, a dirigible. <laughs> I have to teach this painting, so I have to stop laughing. Okay. All right. We're going to get some comments about that. Stop laughing and teach me the painting. As I'm going down this painting, yeah. right? I'm adding more and more white to my brush, and I'm not rinsing it out. So there's a lot of ultramarine still on the brush. Yeah. I may pick up some of this retarder every once in a while. And I'm just coming down and keeping my brush strokes very horizontal back and forth. The retarder is allowing me to get a nice smooth flow of paint back and forth. And the whole trick of this is just to lighten it as you go down and to have a smooth transition back and forth. Now, you don't see me going way back up into the sky. Yeah. That's because I really need these kind of value changes. It creates a little atmosphere that I'm yeah. needing. We need atmosphere, man. <laughs> don't you know that? Atmosphere. Just keep adding white. <coughs> If I need to dispense more pigment off my brush, I actually just press down harder. Gotcha. That's how I do this. It looks like a magic trick, but this is really just about knowing how deep the pigment is in these bristles. Because you can see, even though I haven't gone back into the blue, there's just still blue there. Yeah. How is Robot Cam today? Oh, Robot Cam is having a horrible time focusing on that wonderful blue sky you're making. Really? Because it's so light? Well, yeah, because every time your hand's there, it goes, oh, yeah, I know where that's at. Otherwise, it goes, that's the wild blue yonder, and I must look into it. <laughs> <laughs> See, we'll fix that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll figure out the setting that corrects for this. 
I gotta make a list of questions that I have for the technical people. How do you fix for this white canvas problem? I think we need. I think. I think that Flame nailed it. We need more cowbell. More cowbell. More cowbell. There can never be. An, thank you, Flame. There can <laughs> never be enough cowbell. Those of you that saw the announcement, how did you like our little cookie in there? Do you know which cookie it was? Because I was thinking the whole time when we did that, that Flame would be so amused at that video. Didn't you? I am taking this down. Woo, I just flung some paint that way. <laughs> I'm taking this down to the halfway mark of my canvas. See that there? And I'm yeah. just coming back up a little bit to smooth because I have the retarder. I can do that. Right? And here we go. This nice graded sky. Yeah. Now at this moment, your sky is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> There's well, nothing wrong. <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> at this moment. But we're gonna we're gonna throw a monkey wrench in there. This is that zinc white I was talking about. Yeah. And if I can show you the difference, this is titanium white, and you can see that you can barely see the lines, and this is zinc white. And see how you can see the lines? Oh wow. That's the difference. Gotcha. So that's how, how different they are as a white. <laughs> if you were wondering, how different are they? Super different. So it's really funny. I forget how international our audience is. Hi. Because Everyone from around the world. Yeah, about half of them are going, so why is it, why would you need more cowbell? Like they, they just, they, they don't have the Saturday, Saturday Night Live pop culture reference to be able and to And you go. are spared, I think. Yeah. You are spared. I, I don't know. That. But I then you gave us, some of you gave us Benny Hill, which you owe us <laughs> forever for that. Therefore, there shall be more cowbell. <laughs> now, I'm not going to get my brush very wet, but I moisten the bristles because at the moment before they're a little moist, they're a little stiff. And I'm just warming the brush. Yeah. And I'm loading this zinc white. What could you do if you didn't have zinc white? You could just use your regular white. It'll yeah. be okay. I'm just going to get a more predictive effect. I'm going to come here with this, and I'm going to, can, can you zoom in? And I don't know if it can mm -hmm. see. I don't, I don't I know can, if I need to put my hand here. I can do all sorts of things. Hold on. No, I can. Okay. This is some airy-fairy nonsense that I do. I don't even know why I did this to y'all. Oh, yeah. I'm there. Okay. So we're going to just tell this little cloud story. And how I tell it is I want it flat on the bottom. And there's just this sort of little lyrical bit up top. And see how the paint and the wet and the brush do this sort of, I'm a distant little cloud that you can barely see floating. Oh, no, no, okay, so I'll let there. you come here. Because I want people to sort of see this. Sometimes we overthink the cloud thing. Where are you going there? Over here. And like I said, this is three hoop paintings. We're going to be here All for right. a minute because we're going to talk about some things. If I'm looking at a picture, right, of a landscape, the first thing I have to lay in is the thing that's the furthest back. Right? It's the furthest back from everything else, and that is going to be the sky. I'm looking for the objects that are the dimmest, grayest, furthest away from me, and those are the ones I'm putting in first. Right? This atmosphere of the sky, obviously it's in space, so it's going to go on first. And then what's the next farthest thing? Some of you are having an aha moment right now. Oh my gosh! The clouds are the next farthest thing! That's right, the clouds are the next farthest thing. And sometimes when you're looking at a piece, that can help you think about when can I put this in? Yeah. And when can I not put this in? <laughs> right? All right. Oh. So if you're thinking, what's the farthest thing from me that I can see? Obviously, it would be the sky. And then the next farthest thing that you can see. So I just go up and down and I just make sure there's some flat at the bottom. And I don't tell the whole cloud story. More yeah. story that I tell, the more grief it's going to give me anyways. <laughs> And I might come up here. I mean, we'll do some, some Tingagan style clouds. If you don't know who he is, he's a YouTuber and he's really good at clouds. Right? We'll do some of those incredible cumulus nimbus. But right now we have some little fluffy outliers doing their little cloud thing in the sky. It's a clear day in the mountains. <laughs> okay? Yeah. I'm going to hair dry my farthest away. My farthest away objects. Oh, no. Okay. I'm going to go say hello to everybody. Okay. Hi, everybody. 
So, wow, thank you for all being in the room. We've got like almost 300 people here. It's like, it's like, we're already, I was like, 298, 299. It's just going to tempt us there, isn't it? But thank you guys. Oh, so thank, thank you guys all for joining us. I really appreciate it. All of our moderators I see out there in the room. I see Ethel and Bonnie and, and Flame and Mona and Carolyn and all of our, and I don't, I haven't seen, uh, uh, I haven't seen Mark up yet. He must still be sleeping in, so we'll poke him later. Big hugs over there to Mona and and Elizabeth. I heard she got her her uh, Goldilocks. I saw that um, all the way over there in Netherlands. So that's totally awesome. Um, so thank you guys. Oh yeah, I forgot to say uh, like, comment, subscribe. You know, do all that stuff that you're supposed to. I'm yeah. supposed to ask you about. I well, the, you know, the only thing I'll say on the subscription stuff is that it's one step closer to YouTube bothering to tell you when we're live. It's true. <laughs> That's really all it's for. The only, but, I mean, like I enjoy seeing your subscriptions. They make me deliciously happy. And all the likes and comments make me happy. I yeah, w- likes and comments, all the stuff makes us happy. On and and also it's nice for you guys <gasps> to talk to each other in those comments. Um, but for the purposes of you guys, when you hit the subscribe button, it, if you go to the gear that's by it, it'll let you set reminders, decide how you're notified. And then if then once you've done that, once you've set those reminders, if you go to the upcoming playlist where we have upcoming lives, you can then click that little bell. And that's actually how you get to find out. Uh-huh. But I do love the Twilight Bark system that the Sherpettes have created, <laughs> which is just <laughs> or somebody's like. Shrimp is on. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes. I do enjoy that. <laughs> Sorry. I was giving I was I was giving Mark uh, Mark a hard time while you were away, but apparently he has risen from his zombie grave and joined us this morning. Has he risen from his zombie <laughs> grave and joined us this morning? I'm gonna take a little of my cad red over to my ultramarine blue, and this gets us this sort of grayish, stonish purple. Right. It's kind of a very, you would never th- think you want this color, but yet you do. And I'm going to add just a little too much white to it. Right, right mm-hmm. here. And I'm going to come along a couple inches above mm. the halfway point right here. And I'm going to put in a little mountain. And I-, I like to do this with my mom. My mom always likes to tell people, don't go up and down and make zigzags. And she's right. <laughs> don't Why not? do that. Well, because... Does that, I mean, there's some mountains in the world that look like that, but those are really hard to paint (laughs) because they look so wrong. I'm going to come on the edge of my brush and I'm going to kind of wander up. I'm making sort of a little butte or rise here. And one of the things I do is I sort of definitely wiggle or deal with my brush. You know, I looked at a reference photo for this. So this mountain exists somewhere and that does help me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I'm going to pull down... In this kind of curved angle. I don't know if you guys can see this. This curved angle. Where I'm pulling the paint down. I'm going to get some more white. And I'm pulling it down. And I'm just putting this in here. This grayed out. When This is the next thing. You In a landscape. When you're trying to say I've got a mountain off in the distance. We have a lot to do with this mountain. Because it gets green and stuff. You need it to be grayed out and off in a very cool color. The tonality will be cool and it will be gray and soft. And that is what will push it farther away. So I'm laying out my landscape and then I'm like, what's the next thing I can see in my horizon? Right? This is all the background. When you're referring to that in a painting, you're talking about the background. You're talking about this stuff that's far away. Gotcha. That is not any further away because it's on this flat canvas right here. Sorry. I have a moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I, 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 everybody out here is in a pretty silly mood today. So there's, there's lots They're of... Like, yeah, new people are like, don't be silly when you're teaching landscapes. Oh, wrong It's very stressful stuff. They're like, oh, you came on the wrong day. <laughs> <laughs> but can you see how this is just so easy? It's just, I barely even work at it. And it's like, oh. I've got a mountain. Oh, yeah. You were away while uh, I was uh, saying this, but we got over 300 people in the room. Like 312 right now. It's just 312 like, hi, people? Everybody. Hello, 312 people. How are uh, you doing at home? Are I know you, you like to know. Are you sippy sipping? I'm having to... I'm making healthy life choices, so this is water with lemon. <laughs> 
that's yummy though. You know what? Cassandra had a very <laughs> interesting uh, suggestion. Hmm. She was saying that uh, would Cinnamon be interested in a video of all her neat jewelry and hat collections? We would like to see it. Yeah. Ooh. You want to see all the hats and jewelry and should... aprons? There's a horde. <laughs> it's it's kind of a problem. Um, we have a mom next door who has a daughter who's very successful in the pageant circuit. In the kid pageant circuit. And, you know, when I have people over sometimes back in the studio, they just look at me like I've lost my mind because they see the aprons and the hat the whole <laughs> bit. And she saw it and she totally just got it. She's like, oh, that's your costume rack. I was just like, what? <laughs> Somebody understands our crazy. Somebody gets it. Now, this is a little too light here for me. It's a little bit too light. So I'm going to pick up some of the darker color I had, I had out. Right? And this is me just working that mountain. And I'm going to put some of this darker ultramarine blue but it's still got a lot of this white in it right coming up here because I just want this to feel like what it is which is this nice steep slope Isn't that lovely that is it's just easy I just love it it's just super fun super fun okay okay so then that I'm caught mm -hmm. next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little of my ultramarine blue pretty shockingly right yes because I'm just crazy like that I'm gonna make sure I've got white in it and I'm going to come up here and make sure that there's <laughs> some of this happening here, right here at the bottom. Maybe like a little bit right here along this little ridge, kind of just creating some shape. A lot of these are going to get painted out. So focus your attention to detail right in this space. Just realize these are here in case your trees don't cover everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's all it is. This paint here is just in case your trees didn't cover something. And that's what the layering is about. If you didn't paint them, trust me, it would look wrong. Got you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know it's just mean. a crazy, crazy thing. You'd be sitting there going, what's going on? Why is it not looking right? I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow over to my ultramarine. And I'm going to get ugh, that dark, dark, dark kind of army green. I'm going to put a little white into it. And I'm going to, on my mountain, add this little sort of green detail. Can you see it coming down? I'm making little short brush strokes. Now, are you still using the blending medium? No. Okay, you're not. This is You only use the blending medium on the background? On the sky, but you know, some of it's still there. But I, ha I haven't gotten into it. You haven't gotten into it for this? No. It, okay. It, I really, it's the skies that the blending medium is just a nice treat for. Yeah. Nice treat. I'm just, maybe I'm going to take some of this green up to the top of the mountain. And my my brush pressure, just so you all know, is fairly light. I don't want this to be a bright green. One of the worst things that can happen to me here for this effect is that the green get bright. If I need to, guess what I do to knock it back? What do you do? Add a little red. Those of you who have done the color quest know exactly why. <laughs> Uh, uh, because it grays out that I green. I thought that was going to be the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did the color quest. I was here. John is with you guys um, more, <laughs> more than when he was trying to date me and he was taking art class with me to impress me. <laughs> John is he's with you guys. He's actually learning right now. See how we're putting this little green on this faraway mountain? Yeah. We just want a little green. We're saying that this, this mountain isn't just stone and granite. It has some character happening. It's got some green. It's far though, right? Far, far, far. And then I might take a little of my red. I haven't even rinsed my brush. Notice this, this happens to me a lot in landscape painting. A lack of brush rinsing will occur. Oh yeah? Yeah. Just noticed it in observationally. Now, I come from more of a daily painter sensibility. If you guys are familiar with art, you know what I mean. And so a lot of that is more like how I get the stuff done. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be looking at it more and more like daily painters. I'm going to add a little of this dark. Oh, just cautiously. My brush pressure is so light. I'm just dusting, kissing, just barely, barely caressing this mountain. I know it sounds how it sounds, <laughs> but it's what you're doing. And I, I never understood why Bob sounded like he sounded sometimes, but now I'm teaching. I'm like, well, that's the only way you can describe it. <laughs> <laughs> like a little butterfly dusting the mountain. But see, we're just doing it as, as, as softly and as, as mellowly as we can. 
Aw, this is the cutest thing. Just So we have a, a little brush with us in the audience. Hi, little brush. Who is it? M- Mari Jeek. Margeek? I believe. I'm, boy, I'm horrible at pronounce, pr- pronouncing Just names, correct, John, and we'll but fix it. She's uh, 12. 12. And uh, she's never been so impatient for having uh, her birthday. All she wants is painting presents. So... Uh, but she, so very excited. I about think painting. you're. I think you have a great taste in birthday <laughs> presents. I'm completely with you. <laughs> Everyone else thought it was really cute too. So I was like, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty cool. You will have to post and share with us what you get for your birthday because we'll all be remembering you. Yes. With your mom's permission, of course. of course. So I'm loving how that's looking. Aren't you loving how that's looking? I am. How could we possibly do this better? More layers? I don't know what they're going to tell us. <laughs> More layers? More layers, yeah. That's pretty much what it is. Live chroma keying. Live chroma key. So I'm going to have the fun of taking some of this burnt sienna over to my phthalo green. Burnt sienna, phthalo green. You could also be using sap green here if that's what you had. I might even shockingly add some cad red. I'm trying to get a deep, deep green. Yes. You know, um, I'm sure there's a tube that's the deep I'm trying to get. If you have to, grab a little phthalo. Ah, now I've got it. All right. And I'm going to come up at the halfway mark almost. Maybe, what, a little above it. And I'm going to come down along my mountain. And then I'm going to make another little ridge that goes up. See that little ridge? This is our valley. This is the beginning of our up close. This is happening for us kind of valley. And I can even take this maybe even up a little bit if I need to up over that. And I'm going to start painting this green, this dark, dark green in. Lots of layers happening here. So don't be too stressed about it. Right now, your whole big thing is you got to get some paint on the canvas. More than you think you do. And it probably needs to be darker than you think it needs to be. When I'm coming down the hill... I'll be kind of, you know, sort of thinking about the hill direction with my brush stroke. But when I'm coming to the center, I will start sweeping it back and forth like that. Yeah. Just the thing I'll do. You might be noticing I'm doing. Pulling a little red over to the green. Pulling a little brown over to the green. Pulling a little phthalo over to the green. And that's how I get it deep. Again, there's probably a tube of something, that color. But I like mixing it making all those color charts and then not mixing any greens absolutely absolutely all right valley 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 distant distant mountain and we may find as we're going we need to push that mountain back even further it happens and we would do that by even using like maybe our zinc white Uh uh-huh and graying the mountain out i had to do that in the design i got too bright with my colors and i was like oh i better get on it with some zinc white So now I'm painting my middle ground. Mm -hmm. My middle ground is going to be all the stuff going on in this space. It's going to be these trees in the background, this valley coming forward, a few rocks and everything. And it's not going to become my foreground until right here. So these colors will be deeper, darker, a little grayed out in this space, not as defined. As I move forward, everything will come into focus, come sharper. So when you guys are looking at pictures, what you're looking for are these zones in the photograph. Gotcha. And you're not even going to be painting what you see. What are you (laughs) going to be painting? You're going to be painting a painting translation of what you see, right? Because sometimes to make your point, you are going to exaggerate things. Because a photograph can give information that unless you're doing hyper-realism, which probably as a beginning student you're not... um, it, it, it's too much information for you to put in. So what you start to do as an artist is you simplify into an artistic translation. Right? So I, I'm not going to get every little subtlety here. I'm going to generally say gray or dark or far away. Broadly. Gotcha. Simply. Which is the other thing I like about the daily painters. Is And I have been a daily painter. And you never know. Maybe someday you guys will be taken on a daily painting kidnapping journey. <laughs> <laughs> for an entire year it could happen those vloggers think they can do it daily wait till you've daily painted it's another thing it is you I, come out the other side of that a whole new human being you daily paint i do 
I do, but I used to like daily, daily paint. Like, where you get down, you're like, I haven't got nothing to paint. Stick an egg on a plate. I don't know, I'll paint that. <laughs> egg on a plate. <laughs> now you paint every day because you must paint. Every day. <laughs> paint, Sherpa, paint. But I'm just saying that. Like, if you think about that, like, there's the vloggers that vlog every day. My version of that would be to get a picture every day and turn it into a painting. <gasps> hey. Yeah? So you were asking about doing some Shopkins earlier, weren't you? Shopkins. So much I want to do some Shopkins. Oh, there's a little brush that w in our in our in our audience who really wants uh who wants one. So I'm gonna say to the little brush. It's Yolanda's niece. I'm, I don't see her. I wish I could see the little brush's name. So you okay. Can shout so out I'm her. looking at the taco, and I really like the strawberry. But where I'm having a disconnect is I'm trying to find out what there's so many Shopkins. Yeah. There's like a lot of them, and I'm like, and and a, and what's popular for both boys and girls. Dude, I'm so with Mona on this one. What? What's a Shopkins? <laughs> oh, goodness, Mona. <gasps> it's it's a new toy that separates parents from their money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new this collectible and their little 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 things. They're like, um, they, I don't know, it's the animation of food and packages and boxes and crackers and french fries. It's like a little burger guy and it's a little strawberry guy. And these Shopkins are alive food and toys. And they're cared for by these Shopkin girls. I know a shocking amount of so, so is this like Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Um, no, it's cute and adorable and a child appropriate in every way. And there's probably about a million unboxing videos on YouTube about them. Okay. I would think. <laughs> I would think. I'm still painting down. I'm about four inches down. I'm going to carry some of this down a little further. I am this dark, dark, dark. The dark, dark, dark. In the dark, dark wood. So, yeah, I would just love to know what that little brush had to say about what kind of Shopkin. What would be a great Shopkin to see? Because, again, I'm liking that rainbow taco. Because, you know, rainbow taco. <laughs> just, I'm just saying, what else could you be worried about besides rainbow taco? <laughs> we, we seem to have more than one Aqua Teen follower. Oh, do we? Us, yeah. Well, <laughs> They're like, yes, it's the it's the it's the child appropriate version of Aqua Teen. <laughs> it's yes, the child appropriate version of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. That would be is that Flame Gremlin who's explaining it? Child appropriate. Actually, it was Mark. Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Mark wouldn't know what was child appropriate. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> You're giving him a hard time. I am because sometimes I get in private chat with Mark, and Mark can take a message. Like you'll be in Facebook Messenger chatting with people, and Mark can just take he, you a place you didn't want to go. He can take a meme and go with it. Dude, and you're like, stop, stop, stop. No more <laughs> gifts. Mark, come on, dude. <laughs> he also has this really funny cat. There's a couple really funny cats in our community. Mark has a really great cat. He um, does. He does. He's the, a really the great cat. cat. always comes into his, his yeah. videos, too. It's actually the cat is the real YouTube star in that <laughs> relationship. <laughs> Mark has a YouTube channel, if you guys didn't know. So I've got this about this sort of like little smile shape where I'm starting to get in my, you know, my landscape. I'm thinking about my basic landscape here. I'm going to take some over from the left here a little bit and just fill this in because I know I'm going to need this paint here, really, at the end of the day, is what it is. All right. And then just to have more here, as you got to have more here... I'm going to take my green and my blue and just the brown, but not the red this time, and more to the green. I don't know how to explain it. It's just a shade greener uh -huh. and kind of get in the rest of this space just with the green because I just have to have some green here and just get the rest of it green. Yeah. Can I ask a, a question here on colors and blue? Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, Cheeky was asking, uh, can I add a little black to cobalt blue to make it ultramarine blue or any other color? Um, I think if you add a little black to cobalt blue, you get closer to a Prussian than an ultramarine. Okay. But what I would say is there is a couple artist blogs where these people who have their PhD in color theory work on mixes. And if you're trying to get a formula to figure out how to mix your paint to a particular color, that is a good resource. Yeah. It, it, it's going to be work, though. Like, seriously, that's, that's, that's your master thesis. <laughs> so, in art, when they're like, we give you these three colors, mix burnt umber. And you're like, 
What? You dig up burnt umber. You dig it up. Don't mix it. It's dug up from the earth. Every caveman knows that. <laughs> but there's your life, right? Simona was asking, what's going to happen while you're out of town? Will there be a stream? There won't be streams, but there will be videos. When we're going to put up we a banner know. that There may be. be streams. Well, John's trying to figure out how to make it streams. I think I've got a schedule from 9 a.m. to 8 at night <laughs> where we're in training every minute of the day. We'll def I'll definitely make sure we have videos and some fun stuff up here for all you guys. Oh, that got a little dark on me. It's okay if it gets a little dark on you. Up here, this is just the layer of paint you need to have so that you can do the fresh, open work you want to do. And you just need it. That's all I can tell you. You just need a layer of paint here. <laughs> They're all so, stunt hands will paint. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> stunt hands will paint. It's not we likely. have some really cool ideas of videos that we will drop. And of course, because I'll be flying back during the collab with Angela Anderson and Leanne and Jane, um, Jane and I will be um, having our videos uploaded. Cool. But they'll be there. Yes. So your Mother's Day painting is still like protected. Don't worry. We're doing lavenders mm -hmm. in a vase. In a vase. Lavender in a vase. So I see that there, there's lots of people are getting their, uh, their Simply Simmons brushes. Excellent. So I hope, you know, definitely, I don't know if you guys are having an easy time. I've heard AC Moore is okay, but I'm really liking the brush guys. Not because they're being nice to me, even though they are. Well, they're actually. <laughs> but being because they're being nice to you guys. Yeah, they they actually they we they did a really cool thing. Um, they came to us and uh, well, I I had reached out to the brush guys because I wanted to learn a little bit more about them um, because our community's been having such a nice time with them and. But uh, we don't want to recommend anybody until we know they're like well that we have a reasonable hope or yeah. prayer that they're okay. Yeah, I we mean you can't guarantee anything, but we try. We 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 wanted to to learn more about them and you know sort of find out you know who they were and uh, come to find out that there are a couple of guys from the art industry um, who set up shop in uh, in San Diego out of their garage and started selling some brushes that from people that they knew who are good quality you know pr uh, manufacturers and that business grew and grew and grew and they had a little warehouse and you know they've been taking care of our all of our people and so I called and I wanted to learn more and it's been really cool learning about them yeah and uh, in that process, they said that they, they've so enjoyed our community. and um, They I, like you guys. They really like you guys. And you guys have... have well, but you're buying brushes for them, so, yeah, so <laughs> it's definitely I mean, self-motivated. But no, really, they really are cool guys. They really do like the yeah. community. They really do like you guys. And um, they, uh, they gave us a, a, a discount code that we have now for oh, you we? guys. Yes, it's oh. all up and running. So it's, uh, if, you go, if you use Art Sherpa or The Art Sherpa... Then there, you get a five percent discount on any of your purchases there. Um, I don't know if that'll help, but hopefully that and, will help. Yeah, and I thought that was. And really they're cool. really trying to keep the Simply Simmons brushes in for y'all. They understand how frustrating it is to not be able to get the number ten. Mm -hmm. I think I just put out ultramarine. See, I just did it. What'd you do? I just put out more ultramarine where I wanted Thalo. Happens to everybody, guys. I'm a sippy sippy. See, this is what <laughs> happens when you have water for your sippy sippy. Well, sorry, I I, I, you know, I get excited when I meet new people. Healthy life choices. <laughs> <laughs> you have been good about that. I have been trying, y'all. I'm trying to make good Sherpa choices. I'm trying to make, I'm on the YouTube and I'm watching people's, you know, health vlogs. Yeah. Right. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> trying. <laughs> I got one really in shape arm here, though. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, bright. Yeah. So here's the bright. Brights are squares and have a very sharp edge. And I'm going to get that dark, dark color I had going back here again. Okay. So I'm going to pull out my green, add a little phthalo to it to darken it. I'm going to grab a little burnt sienna and even a little red to just create a deep, far away color. Right? And then I'm going to load this on the edge of my brush. And remember how I said, guys, all that pine work you've been doing will pay off? <laughs> this is what's about to pay off. So we're going to put in some branches. I'm not branches, trunks. If you've ever done any of my Silhouette Galaxy Night paintings, you've made this shape. You're ready for this moment. This is your moment. This is your time shine so I've 
Notice how I've got this one taller and they go shorter here and I've got this one here. And then as I'm coming down the hill, I'm gonna shorten these up. All right, I'm gonna shorten these up. This one might be closer. Shorten them up. Shorten them up. And we're gonna do something else sort of here in this valley. What do you gotta do over in the valley? Well, you have to wait till we get to the valley. I'm gonna wipe off my brush because you can see it's getting up into my heel. When I was mixing, I got a little over exuberant. So I'm gonna pull it out and reload. And it's back on my tip. And then, if you will remember, I'm going to just do this little dab up here. And then I'm gonna start. I'll come out, dabbing. dabbing. And then I come out, just give him a little branch here. And then come along and give him a little branch there. I'm on the edge of my bright, aren't I? Yeah. On the edge of my bright. I'm just saying, hey guys, there's a little tree that lives here. He is a happy tree. Bob was right. All the trees are happy trees. Even those trees that live by the freeway. <laughs> I don't know why I went there. I always feel bad for those trees. <laughs> they get to see all the cars. They get to see all the cars. I guess those trees are urban trees. They probably feel like they're more sophisticated than other trees. <laughs> like... Like if trees were like to communicate across long distances via pollen, you know, kind of a la um, Shyamalan style. <laughs> now, as I'm coming down here, I'm going to keep dabbing, keeping this texture up, right, along this ridge line. I'll take it down a little bit past the mountain line that we so carefully drew that you're probably just like crying that you worked so hard on. <laughs> and I'm taking it away. I need another little tree here along this outside edge. Because you need these trees to go right off the canvas. And at about this midway point, you're going to need them to become solid. And I'm just dabbing this brush to get that texture. Can you see the texture? Yeah. All right, that's all that takes to get that. And see now the sky is peeking through our branches. Our trees are very, very, very dark. And we want them very, 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 very dark. We want that. And here comes another little guy. He lives here. He's kind of the rebel in the tree group. <laughs> no, he just does his own thing, I can tell you. Look at him. He's just doing his own thing. The other trees are kind of annoying at him, but they're like, well, you know, <laughs> Douglas fir over there has to do his own deal. Can't help it. It's his way. Oh, other cat I want to shout out today is Kim Sim in today. Oh, I think I, I, think I did see her. I would like to shout out Stormtrooper. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's one of my favorite cats in our community. <laughs> I love y'all's pets. I love to see your kids. I love to see your pets. And um, I'm definitely, I, Stormtrooper really could have his own Instagram account. He has a lot going on. Gotcha. <laughs> no, he really does. <laughs> he, and of course, he has the costumes and the whole bit. I think he's kind of a famous cat. He's not Grumpy Cat famous, but he's like Art Sherpa famous. <laughs> <laughs> I bet those less than famous guys are sorry now. <laughs> YouTube thought I was good. <laughs> you know, it's on like Donkey Kong, guys. We're going to be auditioning every year, no matter how big we get. Yeah, it's true. We are. They've started it with me now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to work this much shorter tree. But to see how these trees are already creating this depth, here's the mountain in the background, a valley is happening here, right? And we've got these trees just going on here. Make sure that this is solid through there. And here's this tree. Just kind of, uh-oh. Oh, little Luna and them playing. I don't think that's playing. I'll go check it out. I think that's you took my doll. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you suck. Stop taking my doll. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. I will have a sippy sippy. I'm a little, it's really hot in the studio today. Do you see my lemons in there? I put organic lemons in there because YouTube said I should. It said it would help me in some way. I think the terms were it would mineralize me. 
I don't know why I need to be mineralized. I'm a cave now. Like a cave, I need mineralization. I have a juicer, and right now, like, the juice of choice is the, uh... You guys at home, don't, don't freak out. It's like a thing that's happening. Uh, beet. Beet, yeah. Grapefruit, carrot, apple. I'm trying to do that one every day. I tried to do the green smoothie. I'm just not quite there yet because I keep thinking I'm drinking algae. Which I think actually the additive is algae. So I'm not wrong. What? No. What yeah. Are you, what are you on about? You know what I'm on about. I have no idea. I would, dude is fine. You hear me mumbling to myself in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Juice in this. <laughs> Stupid beats. beats. And <laughs> 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 Just have some feelings about what's happening. I don't know what to tell you. So back here, I'm going to just be dabbing these distant, far away little little guys, okay? They're just, they're not as close as these ones here. These are far away valley trees. It's a valley. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know, just doing this. We're just saying valley in a simple, simple way. We're doing this very differently than paint air, plain air painters do it. But I really love the daily painting method where we just kind of... I, we're going to get even more and more into it, guys. We're not even the full full daily painting. The full daily. Mm -mm, we're not the full daily, but we're starting to introduce the concepts and ideas of how it's done. Pretty soon, we're going to be doing 10-minute quickscapes. Oh, Don't knows. panic. 10-minute quickscapes. <laughs> 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 You're like, wait. <laughs> Two hours. It's a, it's a good amount of time. I likes it. I'm going to grab a little of my yellow ochre. And it just gets right into my green. I'm pull a little bit into this green, right here on the hill. I'm gonna come under these trees. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of this down. Maybe here too. Come along this little edge. Come along Ooh. into my valley. There's some stuff happening here. In these far away little spaces. Pull that down. Let's get a little more ochre. Ooh, too much ochre. Too much ochre. Sit down. <laughs> Don't jump up on my palette, you rude and impatient paint. Wait your turn. I'm going to sweep over to the right with some of my brush strokes. Some of them will come down, like down, down, down to the right. And I'm just starting to create this sort of dimensionality to the hill, right? Yeah. Now I'm going to take my yellow ochre and my dark green, and I'm going to mix just a little brighter than what's on my hill. Guess what I'm going to do? Come back here. What? On... What? The left side of my trees, I'm going to add a little dab a dab. Look at this. Down into this. Telling this oh, story. Yes. Just a little bit. Don't dab out the whole thing and it won't have dimensionality. You want to do little. Just a little layering. Just a little bit. A little is a lot. It's like cayenne pepper. Right? I'm just looking for just a couple highlights that are happening in the trees. And I'm just using my brush to just sort of say, hey guys, stuff is afoot. That's all that's going on. Stuff's afoot. These trees live in the sun. They live in the sun. That's where they live. And then I just <laughs> end there. Put maybe As a little opposed more. to those cave dwelling trees. <laughs> cave trees. <laughs> we call them stalagmites. I'm going to pick up a little more yellow ochre, right? Just yep. a little more. Just a couple little places on the hill and add a little highlight here. Maybe right there. Maybe the little sun caught this and comes down and sweeps. And notice that I changed the curve of my brush to say there's it's coming down this hill. Get a little bit there. Now, do you see the hill that's happened? I do. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Hut hill. That's all it takes. Hill. Hill. Hill, hill. Hill, 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 cloud. <laughs> When, I, when you get better and better at this, the ideal space to get in this is like, you just go, psh, 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 landscape, drop the brush. <laughs> <laughs> it's this super fun space to be in. So I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue over to my green, mix just a little brown into it. And I might even get a scotch a smidge of, believe it or not, yellow ochre, because I don't want this to be quite the same as these. I'm going to come over to this side of my hill. And I'm going to drop a little tree. He's going to have a little friend here. Maybe another little friend here. I like to I like to say that they, you know, they got stuff going on. Maybe th this guy goes out to the side. He's a rebel. Look at him. Being rude, leaning out. 
But he's going to start a trend. I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Trending. <laughs> that one leans out too because they're just they just can't play. So, uh, and so we're going to get these guys in. <laughs> now yeah. we ha had a question here from. I have an answer. Why is uh, the the ground so blue? Oh, up here? Yeah. Yeah, because I had a lot of blue left. And really, everything below here, remember, guys, I said everything below here, we just need kind of a green yeah. color here down. Because we're going to come up with all kinds of swatches of color, and I just want the canvas to not be white. Gotcha. So this is just underpainting? Yeah. When you when when you watch, like, someone really put in a landscape real quick, they're going to make a lot of fast decisions. This could be red under here. It can actually get crazy. Yeah. I can do some crazy colors under the underpainting that pop through, and you'll still be like, that's the best landscape I ever saw. <laughs> it's so amazing. I'm somehow turning my landscapes into a Quentin Tarantino Western movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like Quentin would paint with this. I, I don't know you guys who are Quentin fans in the community if you think that might be true, but I feel like Quentin would love our chatty, chatty show. <laughs> I do too. I, you know what? I would love to have uh, him like produce one oh of these God. shows, I like Quentin Live style. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> I'm sure it would have vampires. He's like, yeah, it would be amazing. It would be incredible and totally incredible for you. But you know, <laughs> and and you know what? He wouldn't even. Well, maybe, but I mean. At least uh, we would put a rating on it. Well, <laughs> we would do a parental lock on the Tarantino <laughs> episode. <laughs> Just saying. I don't really like if he did some family content, that would freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> so, this is dark, but it's not quite as dark as that because we're going to get really into some lighter colors mm -hmm. over here on these trees. Right, we're getting in. So this little, they're coming down this hill. I don't know why I went leany. It just felt good. Because because it feels Cause good could. to lean. Huh? Because it feels good to lean. It feels good to lean. Sometimes you got to lean out over your valley. Those trees wanted a better view. So I added a little yellow ochre to that mix. I went thalo green, burnt sienna, and a little yellow ochre. <laughs> and I'm just coming along here. You know, I'm... Oh, he's got a little branch out there, and, and he's just leaning out. He's got his feelings. But this one said, you lean out, I'll lean out twice as far as you, man. <laughs> you got nothing on me, man. I'm a free tree. I don't know what's going on in my forest today. I'm going to just you add a little. some rebel trees out there. I do. I feel like I've got some really rebel trees. I think it's like the going to New York and <laughs> seeing everybody else's films. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> They're going to figure out that I don't know. All right, so I'm coming along here. We got the lights on today. We got the lights <laughs> on today. Look, they've already helped us. See? <laughs> I'm actually painting out his little friend. His little friend disappeared. He's oh. he's encroaching. It, it just it, happens. No, it's the competitive middle tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the competitive. Now I've just got some thalo and some... Flame's like, yep, that's it's a flame. It's, it's the, that was the Flame's idea. Competitive middle tree. <laughs> And we're going to just have little little trees coming up here and coming down the valley, just like we had here. These guys are far, far away. This is going back. There's some bushes. There might be a break between this line and these bushes back here. And we'll keep pushing them back is what we'll do. You just don't even know how much we'll do it. That break just pick is up worth whatever green you have on that palette, dude, at this point. You're just putting in this layer. And they're going to get smaller and weirder and farther away as they come back in the valley. Almost like a fisheye lens, isn't it? Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> don't know why I'm not giving you any grief. I'm going to get some of that yellow ochre on my brush. All right? Yes. And I'm going to come here, and I'm going to, just to about here, I'm going to make a little sort of zag out, and it's going to come back. <laughs> and then this is going to come down here. This little ridge is going to come down here. These are the highlights. This is the sun... Hitting this part of the hill. Look, there's a hill. That's all it took. That's a hill. <laughs> so I don't know how. I, mean, I feel kind of bad for you guys because you're like, wait, what? <laughs> That's all it takes to do a hill. Bit hill. So I'm going to get some more yellow ochre. Ghost Hostess said the funniest thing. I'm been dabbing up here. What did Ghost Hostess say? Dab, 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 dab. So I'm going to make sure I got it exactly. So uh, The Hateful Eight Landscapes, a collection by Cinnamon Cooney. <laughs> Yes. 
worse. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hateful eight landscapes. Hmm. <laughs> Pretty much, can I just throw red paint on the canvas? <laughs> People won't even know that we're being serious. That's what's funny. It'll, that's what'll go viral. That'll be like 17 million views. The hateful eight landscapes. Red on a canvas. Red on a canvas. <laughs> I'm going to get some burnt sienna. Just straight burnt sienna on my brush. I have it rinsed it off and I'm going to come here on the ridge and I'm going to just tap a little of this here. I'm going to put a little bit up into this landscape like this. Maybe a little will come dabbing up here. All right. Yep. It's background. And then I'm going to do something interesting that's going to surprise you. Oh yeah? What you going to do? I don't know. I think I'm going to start crafting the valley. Down in the valley. I craft the canyon. I'm not a singer, but that doesn't stop me. <laughs> John was aware of my weird urge to make like a rock ballad out of everything. I'm like Meatloaf, but can't sing. <laughs> you sing? You actually you can sing quite well. So I mix this dark color here and I'm gonna just pull this down. We're gonna knock this back a little bit, this purple. Let's see how we're creating this sort of landscape. And then I'm gonna do something crazy here. I'm gonna go here, maybe zigzag and forth. Yeah. Flat, and I'm just creating that color little space. What, you're like, what? <laughs> but look what happened. What is it now? Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. It's a valley. It's like a valley. It's just, it's, I know it's terrible, but that's kind of all it is, man. You just kind of keep, you just kind of keep keeping. You know what I'm saying? I might grab some just burnt, because I periodically like to just, not burnt, um, this is ultramarine blue, and in no way looks like burnt sienna, or ultramarine, I don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to just have some of this blue pulling down here along this little ridge, creating this sort of interesting dynamic. And I might even let some of this get into this valley here. So I just did some adjustments on that other camera. Your hand's going to seem a little hot here because I adjusted it so that I could see the... Uh, oh, the colors? The colors a little easier. Yeah, now up close it looks like a hot mess, right? This is what's always so crazy. Like when you're in a landscape class, when people are like up close, they're like, I don't know what I'm looking at. And then far away it really starts to look work. I'm going to make some up and down little tree shapes back here because I can. I just, I don't know. You just do this stuff all the time. I just go, 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 go. All right. So I've got this going here. Don't I? Don't I? Don't I, Mr. Cooney? Don't I? Gonna add maybe a little burnt sienna and a little cad red over to this blue mix, which is gonna get me even more of a gray. Now, if you're any of you are in my mom's class, you're like, I know this gray! I know this! I know it! I know what it's I know what's happening. <laughs> right. Uh-oh. What, uh, what what just went beep beep? <laughs> <laughs> hey, something just said, plug me in. Something just said plug me in. I'm gonna put a little rock back here, guys. So I'm gonna take this little thing here and I'm gonna pull it down. And I'm gonna make this little rock shape. A little more blue into it. And then I'm gonna come along here and I'm gonna say, oh, like right here. Maybe there's another little and a little space for a rock. It could be here. Might be here. Could live there. So it kind of comes up, goes bump, comes down, and like this. The big thing, and my mom's always on me about this, she's like, don't clone. You know, it was don't chew bubble gum with your mouth open and don't clone rocks. This was a big lecture in my house growing <laughs> up. <laughs> don't clone those rocks. Don't do it. Mom, it just doesn't matter. Don't clone them. <laughs> So don't clone your rocks, please. See how I did that mentally? I knew it could be done. <laughs> I'm gonna make a little big rock that's gonna come up here. It's kind of dark, so it might be hard for the camera to catch it. And I'm gonna bring it down like this a little bit. You know, that's happening here. He's happening. He's layering sort of in front of this little boulder. Just, just he's got a little space that's happening. 
And we're going to let him dry for just a second. And we're going <laughs> to rinse, 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 rinse. Can you believe we are? And I'm going to take just my alt, uh, my ochre and my phthalo. And I've got this quite bright green. And I'm going to come and I'm going to make these little upward dashes of this bright, bright green right here. And then they're going to dab, 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 dab down here into the valley. And I'm going to take this green here up the center of my valley. And so my tricks here are this horizontal yet curving brush stroke. And the fact that the strokes are going to get shorter and converge almost in triangle shape back this direction. That's all that's happening here. I might put some of this green over here because I feel like good to mix it up. See, I'm just boop, 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 happy there. And it needs to be some over here. I'm going to be crazy. Let me get my CAD. Now I've got my CAD yellow and my green. And there's going to be just some that's too bright. Too crazy. Too crazy. Too crazy. If it's too bright back here, it's going to pull it too far forward and knock it back. So I'm going to knock it back. So you're knocking it back? I do. These trees need a lighter green. They're ready for it now, too. Are they? They've prepared themselves mentally. So they know that yellow ochre and phthalo green is coming. Brush is loaded. It's time for them to come to life. Time for them to, to become the trees they were always meant to be. Guardians of the forest. <laughs> Good examples to the bad apples. I'll highlight this tree right here. I'm going to leave some of these trees in the back dark so that they push back. I'm going to push yeah. these trees forward with this dark, this lighter green. That's what we're doing. We're pulling them forward. We are saying to this row of shrubberies, this shrubbery, these delicious use of strawberries, that things are fine. And your art teacher is not having a psychotic break. <laughs> <laughs> Clark. I'm clean this out back here towards Clark. the valley. And I'm pulling this, scrumbling this down. Up, 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 up. And I get this, guys. Landscape painting, it takes a minute. This landscape painting, if you haven't landscape painted, here's your deal. You are about ten paintings away from having it click. Yeah. Five to ten, somewhere in there. The worst case scenario, about 20. That's your worst case scenario. And I'm going to put up enough landscape paintings where you can be like, go on a trip, get your paint out, throw in a landscape. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. I could have taken pictures, but I paint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> just, I have so much fun with that. You know what I'm saying? I do. So I'm going to get, I've got my gray over here that I had mixed, and we're going to pretend it didn't dry out from the hot, hot lights. <laughs> and I'm going to get much more white into it. So it's a good couple shades lighter than what it was. I'm going to come on the top of my rocks, dry brush, and just create some Oh yeah. highlights to say, this rock lives in this valley. He has been here for a million years. Uh, by the way, the funny voice does help. You it, succeed at the painting. Just well, saying. All, all rocks have funny voices. They do, man. And I'm going to zigzag back up into this valley. The valley that is the valley. <laughs> it's always been the valley. What is up with me today? All right, I'm going to get some <laughs> yellow ochre. A <laughs> little more yellow ochre than anything else, right? And I put a little zinc white into it because I've got it. Right? little zinc white. And we're going to come along the top of this rock. And just dry brush down this rock. Letting the different tonalities of the paint work out a lot of my painting for me. Because we're like that. That's how we are. We're just rude mm -hmm. like that. Are you guys kind of blown away Dude, by how a landscape is actually built? People are really tripping out here. They're loving all the layers. It's just what it is. 100% when I see you guys do a painting I'm and, and you're like, I don't know what's going wrong. It's just the underpainting. You just had a lot more layers to do. <laughs> That's all it is. And, and you might not have known how much was going on in each layer. You might not have known how much was happening in the sky or how much you might actually have to do to make that mountain work. <laughs> yeah. Or these trees work or this back valley. 
You might not have known. You might not have known at all. I'm gonna get some green here from my mix. Where are you going next? I'm getting some. I'm gonna go right here. I just wanna. I wanna push this space along this ridge a little bit. I don't want this ridge to be as sloped. Ha ha ha! See how they flatten that out? I do. And I just want it a little less sloped. That's all I'm saying. Take that up there. So there we go. Put some green there. Just wanted to push it back a little. Now. Fun stuff is happening. Oh, yeah? Fun stuff is happening. I don't believe you. It's so true. I'm just going to take some burnt and some phthalo green, and I'm going to start creating these layers. I'm with Tara. That is clearly a fraggle rock. Fraggly rocks. Oh, you know they live here. Yeah. And I'm going to just add some of these dashes. So this is where my bright really comes into play. So I've got some here on the right, and I've come down and put some here. I could probably put some of these darker greeny dashes, you know, around. I could do some hair. Oh. Right in front of this rock. Dashing. Thing. <laughs> Stuff is happening. I'm kind of going to tell you about it, but I'm not going to tell you so much. I take the painting away from you, the viewer. Because if you paint in more, the more you paint in, the more you take the control away from the viewer and you try to retain it, the more you better bring it. Yeah. It's just, that's an art rule. <laughs> the more you take away from the viewer's right to complete the painting in their mind, the more you better complete it really well. That's true. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, in the center here, I'm going to create some sections of this darker grass. Just some, because I know I'm going to want some. I'm just doing these dashes. Just because I know. And I'm going to probably have to come back with some of this dark color. I just want to put some in to know I have it. Because this is definitely going to be about building. Building, building, building. Alright. Like over here, I've got my cad in my ultramarine blue into the gray kind of thing. And I'm going to come do these upward little dashes. Look at that happening. What's going on? I'm building this space. Now scrumble to the left and then build some more space up. All right. I'm putting in these layers. There's this, there's stuff that's happening and now we're in the foreground. There's going to be a lot more going on. Brush strokes will be bigger. Um, colors will start to pull in brighter. Dab, 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 dab. Dab, dab, dab. You can go ahead and get some of this yellow ochre, and if you mix it in to this gray that you've got going, you can put that right there. Yeah. Maybe a little touch of that right here. Coming along. Just see these brush strokes are just not the most intense experience you've ever had by any means. Oh. By any means. By any, 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 any means. I'm going to get a little of my yellow ochre and my phthalo. And start putting in this bright green right here. Because now colors, things are closer to us. So they can be brighter. A lot brighter. You do not need to be very repetitive with your mixes because put some of this right here in front of this rock and weave it in front of this dark area here. Maybe another little spot between these two. Okay. Yeah. Maybe a little bit out into the, the this valley here. The valley I will hit a lot. You'll be like, why are you back in the valley? Because it needs it. It asked for it. It's fault. The valley just said, better put me. <laughs> and I said, well, if you insist... And this is, you know, maybe put a little scrumble of this here. Because this here is full of a bushy, grassy wildflower. Now, you can murder yourself by painting a highly realistic each little individual belly grass. And I could definitely demo that to you in time lapse. <laughs> <laughs> right? But that's 80 hours, sometimes 100 hours. Yeah, it's a <coughs> lot of work. And that's my 80 or 100. Mm. You okay? I got the the pine trees and the you know what's oh, that spring? Yeah, all making you coffee, coffee. Here, 
I can mute you if you need to have a good cough. Oh, no, I'm, it's just a scritch. It's just a scritch. Scritch. Sorry. It's okay. Well, if you need to, let me know. Okay, I will. So I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow over to this phthalo green. It's quite bright. Here we go. Look at that. How bright that is. Just dabbing this here. Dabbing this there. Oh, definitely need some right here. This was like begging for it. I was like saying, give me some. I'm like, no! <laughs> you get nothing. This isn't happening for you. You can't have it. Putting these bright colors. And hey, maybe maybe some of this hill gets some, some of that bright color. Not a lot, guys. Just a little. Just a kiss. And this, this, this little hill could have just a kiss. Just a kiss. You don't want a lot because it's going to mess stuff up. A little in the valley. Little pops of bright green. But really, you want it up here. Front and center. Now I'm going to grab some just thalo green. I'm just trying to put these. Making this, breaking this up. It's it's crazy, I know. But you just, it's kind of, if you got through the Monet, you're going to get through this. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to grab some more of my yellow ochre. And I'm going to pull it here. It's okay to some take some of the brush strokes a little bit horizontal because it creates some different dynamics. I'm gonna get into this ultramarine. It's gonna give me a very different color. Add a little white to it. Right here is really about there's this stuff happening, you know, this stuff. Stuff. Stuff is a foot. A foot, John. <laughs> it's a foot. And we're going to say it's happening right here, and we're going to scramble a little bit of it there. See, that's a very forward color. You wouldn't want to put that color back. That is a very forward front of the canvas mix. And it is okay when wet paint mixes into your brush. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That is not where painting is won or lost. The panic <laughs> that you might have <laughs> about the experience of that happening can be where a painting is won or lost. But that is not where, you know, your painting will get away from you or come back to you. So see how we're just sort of painting. And aren't we glad we had this underpainting in? Yes. Doesn't take a lot then to tell a story of just this grassland. Now, if you were just daily painting, you could typically just walk be like, got it, mountain. <laughs> you're just not feeling flowers I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush I'm going to get the number 4 bright Gotcha. I will now put out my quinacridone the quinacridone yeah because you know what the cat did not give me the right red oh yeah Yeah. and so just a little bit doesn't take a lot and I'm going to start with just if you're lucky enough to have the zinc use the zinc oh that's so skinned oh yeah yeah, if you're lucky enough to use the zinc, use the zinc. Um, but if not, you can use white. You'll just need to make sure it stays thin and not overly bright. And start putting in dabs. Dab, dab, dab. Oh, you know, those of you who did Monet are like, the dabbing's back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was coming back. Well, I mean, I knew for the Umbrella Girl, but I didn't know it could just pop up at any time. Right? It's okay that the paint underneath is wet or shows through. It is okay... That stuff is happening here. It's totally all right. Totally okay. All right, I'm gonna put some there. I'm not actually gonna use the zinc white, by the way, guys, all the way through. I will get into the titanium, though. I may put a little of this white in the valley here. And you're like, I have been in this valley. Why does the valley need all the paint? It does. It just does. Just telling you. <laughs> right? Maybe up the hill a little bit. Something happened here. How to chase you up the hill. It can. It can chase you up the hill. It can be, you know, that's what it is. We're just, we're just doing that, right? Lots of little spots where white flowers might have started to bloom. Started to put their little color up into the world and said, hey, 
I feel beautiful today, blooming in the valley of the meadow, mountain meadow. I grew up in, uh, was born in Aspen, Colorado. Yeah. So I've actually seen scenes like this. That's like in my brain, man, burned in my retina as a kid. Have you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now I'm going to get right into my white as I move forward. Because it can be very bright up front. That's okay. Is it? So it's okay for, for you to use a more... A brighter white up there? Yeah, yeah, because it's so close, right? So that the fact that it's so vibrant will actually work in your favor. See, already, even with just these white flowers, it's pushing this whole thing forward. Yeah. All right. But now I can go and get some, say, yellow. Just yellow and some white. And I'm going to start talking about these flowers. These yellow flowers. You know who they are. Cheeky yeah. little buggers that bloom. <laughs> You tell the other ones, hey, I'm so happy. Some of us might live out here. A little dusting of them here. Oh, Gert there had something to say. Maybe some friends there. Because birds will drop the seeds everywhere. Just thinking about where these little yellow flowers might have. Man, you just, you, you go everywhere, but where I feel like... <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. What's happening is my brain is looking for spots, and I've got to maybe resist that urge a little as a teacher and be like, I'm only doing the left side. Because it's so hard on John. <laughs> Even with the robot cam. Hopefully we'll get better at it. I'm over here on the right-hand side. I'll be on the right for a minute. I'll try to resist the... Well, it's tough because I'm, I'm trying to read the comments and move the camera all over oh, the place. Oh, I can't even I imagine what, what your situation so is like we're gonna with say, me. Hi, let's see. Was it hi to Carolyn from... Hi, uh, Carolyn. The Dublin? No, Dublin. no Charlotte. Huh? It's, it's Charlotte from Dublin, Ireland. Sh uh, you know what? I have been to Dublin. Charlotte. John and I have been. We loved it. Loved it. We did. We did. Francis Bacon, one of the greatest artists of all time. Um, <laughs> just saying. I had a lot more white, and now I'm working this little spot here. Just a little bit telling this little flower story here. A flower story. I like that. It's a flower story. This is a story of flowers, John. Little mountain flowers. They like to live their little mountain flower life. Do That's they? That's all they want, to be flowers and be allowed to be the flowers that they are. Blue, so I'm gonna, free or die. I'm going to add a little of my phthalo blue. Yep. Right? To my dogsy in purple. And I'm going to come and grab a little white. And I'm going to add some of these flowers. Okay. I'm over here on the right hand side. I'm going to add some of the right. To to you. There you are. Yeah, they're just, they're just dabbing here. They're just doing their little flower thing. I'll definitely have to add some to the valley, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just because you can. Because you can. Because they could grow there. These are like crocuses or something. Pretty blue flowers. Yeah. I'm ready to go back to Ireland. Yeah, that'd be cool. We have family there. Yep. In Cork. Well, John has Jeanette. I, I have family, too. The Coils of... Yeah. But I don't know any of my family in Ireland. You know your family. This picked up a little more of the dogsy in purple, and that is okay. You want the variety of color to be lifting in your painting here and there. You do. Gotcha. Big time. Because the more you have that, the more this will feel. Little tip, though. If you come back with a lot more white loaded on your brush, and just hit some... I know I need, still need more purple than that, but... If you've got the purple... But you come back with like a really, really light purple compared to what you painted out. You'll get like a two-tone little flower effect. It's very nice. It's just a thing that you can do. That second layer is nice. Don't have to do it everywhere. Just some places. See? Just putting it some places. All right. Rinsing out. Gotcha. 
rinsing. How are we liking our flowers? Like even right there, we could just have these flowers might have been the only flowers that bloomed in the meadow. But we're not done because nature's not done, is it? Yeah, no. No, John's like, I don't know, but I don't want to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Remember in improv, everything is yes. Everything is yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna put some blue in. I don't even know I put it in the first painting, but I felt it right now. I'm just putting in some blue <laughs> here and there. There's a little spot right there. Sometimes when I'm far away, I will get smaller dabs. Right? And then they'll get bigger as I get closer. That makes sense. A little, a little of this bright blue up front, because I feel like it'd be lovely. Lovely is what I feel, John. I feel it would be lovely. And I do think you? the last thing I've got to do is my pink. Yeah. And then we have a mountain meadow that we actually painted on the YouTubes in acrylic. Interesting. And I hope they like it, because they're going to get more of it. <laughs> more landscapes. I think our next landscape will be from... Um, Kimberly's photographs that she posted up at Angelouni. Yeah. Of the California with the poppies and the wildflowers and kind of the de we're going to do that. Oh, neat. And then I, before they're gone, I got to do, I found a mountain lupine I can do and I love mountain lupines. So I might do that. Look at this pink right here. That's just the quinacridone and the white. You can add a little more quinacridone if you want it brighter. If you want a bright one right here. A right little spot of pink flowers that have happened right here. Little dabs of some friends of theirs. They planted over here. They talk. They gossip about the other flowers. It's a problem. <laughs> it's just, I don't know what's <laughs> My world <laughs> is a very busy world. It's very busy. <laughs> Stuff is a f like <laughs> flowers are talking. They do, man. Everything's like Alice in Wonderland, right? We just can't see it. We just don't get it. We don't see the interconnectivity. It's like Avatar. We just aren't seeing it. It's there. Totally there. Adding a little pink here. So that's what you're doing. You're like, where can I add this color to create a weaving tapestry of awesomeness? Definitely better have some in the valley, huh? Yeah. The pinks. You even have some come up here. Tell that story. Maybe a little of them are happening there. They uh, wanted to grow there. They could. They are flowers. They have the right. The right to grow. Yes. I don't know what I'm <laughs> John's like, I don't want to. I'm not picking flowers. I don't know why you're freaking out. <laughs> no, I think it's awesome. I just, yeah, I, I, I like the, I just, the imagination. In Guess the what else it is. Fun. Guess what else it is. Time to like, comment, and subscribe? And be done. No way, really? Look at it. It's, it's so fast. You painted a I didn't think it was going to go meadow. that fast, though. Yeah. I really didn't. I actually yeah. thought we were going to have like more layers. There's Just, a lot of layers. I, lot bet of layers. Those, I bet you guys at home that, are like, that was a lot of layers, John. I don't mean, no more but, layers. But we're I mean, good. It, it didn't take we as layered. much as I thought it would. It doesn't, but if you don't know what it takes, then it's so hard to do it. And I'm telling you, if we do... 5, 10, or 20 of these landscapes, you guys then will start being able to really paint those trip photos and those photographs yeah. that you like so much and have success at that. And I think that is the most important part of the experience. I hope you kind of enjoy this this loose painterly kind of daily painter style yeah. landscape that you can do. Um, I would love to see your results. If you painted along, please post on the Facebook page, on the artsherpa.com, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere. Yep. I'm, I, tr I make a round. I go around. John will tell you I'm on there. He's on there. Yeah. You're going to be hearing from John a little more. Yep. He's going to be saying hi. Cause I'm like, John, you got to help me. Oh, I like, I, I'm, I'm just a little it. shy. Uh, so I don't, you know, I, um, you know, I, I like chatting with you guys in the comments. So you'll see a lot more. Well, well and comments, also but, he's a backseat commenter. I am. He's a backseat commenter. Here's what you guys don't know. So I'm, I'm doing my social media and I'll say, hey, John, Patricia Green said something really nice today. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, and it really touched me and I'll read it to him and he'll be like, oh, say this. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, you have a computer. <laughs> 
<laughs> and accounts on all these places you could yourself. So he's trying. He's definitely going to try to be in there more. Yeah. And it's helpful that I know you guys. Big things are coming next. We're going to see you for Monet. Yes, the girl with the parasol. Tuesday. 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 So I hope I'm going to see you Tuesday. I will get the test painting of that up. Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Monet. Tuesday. Tuesday. And we're going to paint her, and then we're going to paint the daisies. Then. I'm going to be in New York, but you guys are going to get great videos because we have some stuff planned to drop while I'm gone. And then when we come back, it all changes. It but listen, <laughs> just so you guys aren't concerned, um, I am grateful to YouTube Next Up. Hugely Huge grateful. Great. But I'm still me. So there's no conversation that's going to be like, all our videos are now five minutes. No. And I don't think they even want to have that conversation. I think they like what we're doing. They're just going to help us get over some technical challenges and hurdles and help us with equipment and, and get us better at what we're doing. But I don't think they're really asking any of us to be different creators than what we are. So there's no worry that there's going to be change. There'll be changes, but there'll be changes that are awesome and reflect you guys in every possible way. Because there's no point in doing something you guys don't want to watch. What's Blendy doing? Blendy has a, he has a gymnasium now. Of macrame rocks. directly over my head, <laughs> directly over John's head. He just well, not that fast because he's a chameleon, but he's <laughs> he's a busy guy. To all the furry friends and little brushes, thank you for coming today. We love you guys. We want to see you at the easel when really soon. See love you Tuesday. Bye bye.